Hi, my name is Dan and I'm a mental health pharmacist and today I will be doing a presentation on how to do an elevator pitch. I've broken this down in, I've broken this presentation down into four sections. First, we'll define what an elevator pitch is, highlight its utility, then we'll break down the components of an effective elevator pitch, then we'll talk about what to do, what not to do during an elevator pitch, and finally then you can create and practice your own elevator pitch. So without further ado, let's get into the first section of this presentation, which is to define an elevator pitch and highlight its utility. An elevator pitch is a brief way to introduce yourself, get across a key point or two, and make a professional connection. It's currently called an elevator pitch because it's supposed to be so short and concise that imagine you get onto an elevator with a professor or someone you're looking to make a connection with, the doors close, you start your elevator pitch, by the time the doors open, your elevator pitch should be complete. So that's why currently it's called an elevator pitch. It's a really short, concise way to make a professional connection. The utility is multifaceted. So the most common place where you'll do an elevator pitch is certainly doing, during a job interview. During a job interview, you'll almost always be asked, tell me a little bit about yourself, and this is the perfect time to insert your elevator pitch. Next is professional experiences. So if you're in pharmacy school, you'll meet with plenty of um, other pharmacists, some preceptors on IPI rotations, on API rotations. You'll meet with doctors, nurses, all sorts of other professionals, and they'll often ask for a little introduction or background about yourself. So this would be another place where you could utilize an elevator pitch to briefly introduce yourself and say a few things about your career and your interests and um, what, what, what your goals are in regards to professional goals. Next is conferences. So if you're interested in the residency route after pharmacy school, you might, obtain, you might attend the ASHP mid-year conference. At this conference, there's plenty of different booths, all with different residency programs, and you have a brief amount of time to meet the residents and the residency director where you can introduce yourself with an elevator pitch, ask a few questions about the program, and then you have to move on to the next booth. Finally, some written materials. So if you're ever emailing a professor about an assignment or anything, or maybe for the start of a rotation, or to see if you can get involved with any research they're working on, you can essentially do a mini elevator pitch that's written in the email. Next is a LinkedIn profile. So some people have a little profile and you can make this kind of like a mini elevator pitch. So as you can see, there's many uses for elevator pitches. One thing to note is to be adaptable with your elevator pitch. So it's good to have kind of a core structure to your elevator pitch, but based on the context, um, you're gonna change some of the things with your elevator pitch. So if it's a job interview, you're gonna be more professional. If you're meeting upperclassmen on a rotation or something like that, it's gonna be a little less formal. So remember to change your elevator pitch based on the context. So now that we know what an elevator pitch is, let's break down the components into uh, manageable pieces so you can start to create your own elevator pitch. So this is the elevator pitch in its entirety. An introduction, some content, and then a closing. An elevator pitch should be about one minute long at max 90 seconds. So this is a really short uh, speech, a really short presentation. So you really wanna make every word count and be con as concise as possible. So now I wanted to break down these three components and then we can come back and combine them all into an elevator pitch. First, you wanna start with an introduction. This is pretty straightforward. Name, degree, graduation year, things like that. So an example would be, Hi, my name is John Smith. I'm a first year pharmacy student at the Rutgers Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy, and I have an expected graduation year of 2026. After that, you wanna have some sort of a professional hook. This is something that makes you stand out, but it's still on the professional side. So some that I've heard in the past and some that I thought of for this presentation are, I became interested in pharmacy school because both my parents are pharmacists, I was born in Mexico and I'm passionate about helping both English and Spanish speaking patients. I created a website that creates medication lists for patients and I'm passionate about the caring for those with cancer. So for your introduction, you simply combine those two sections. So for example, hi, my name is John Smith. 
Uh, I'm a first year pharmacy student at Rutgers Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy with an expected graduation date of 2026 and I originally became interested in pharmacy because both my parents are pharmacists. So that's the introduction. After that you want to go into the real meat and bones of an elevator pitch which to be fair is still very short because an elevator pitch in total is very short but this is where you talk about experience, skills, goals and then add a little personal flair at the end of it. So first for experience you can talk about work, internships, research, volunteer work. So for example uh, a good experience part would be I volunteer at a boys and girls club and I'm interested in pediatrics or I work in a research lab and I'm, exper and I'm interested in going into a pharmaceutical uh, company. Something like that could be your experience. Next is your skills. So what uh, have you learned? What do you do on your, with your experience? So an example here would be if your experience was working in a lab, you could say, uh, due to my experience working in a lab, I have skills ordering lab supplies and using a centrifuge or whatever, whatever skills would be applicable to who you're talking to. Or say you work, your uh, experience is working in a community pharmacy, you could build off of that and say, due to my experience working in a community pharmacy, I counsel 10 to 15 patients per day and have um, patient counseling skills. Next you want to go into the goals. So the first two parts of the content are what you're bringing to the table, but the goals is what you're trying to get out from the person you're talking with. So my goal, say you're talking to a residency director, my goal is to, to obtain a residency upon graduating from pharmacy school, and I'm passionate about working in pediatrics. So that would be a great goal section. Finally, after you say your goals, you want to add a little personal flair. So I've had um, interviewees tell me before that they've done um, water skiing pyramids and things like that in the past. And those kind of things really stand out. So you want to add a little bit of your personality to the elevator speech. When in, co when in between being professional and uh, not professional, certainly lean on the side of being professional. So make sure that your hobby, fun fact, is still professional. So uh, some examples here. Outside of my professional life, I really like to write and I've published a book. Um, I've traveled to nine countries, I'm passionate about global health. So all that would be like a good personal flair, or if you have a really interesting hobby, or something along those lines. After that, you do a closing. So thank the recipient for their time, and then emphasize your interest in the experience slash, slash position. So this is the slide that I originally showed that shows the complete elevator pitch. So let's walk through what a potential elevator pitch could look like. Hi, my name is John Smith. I'm a first year pharmacy student at Rutgers Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy and I will be graduating in 2026. Uh, I originally became interested in pharmacy because both my parents are pharmacists, so growing up I spent a lot of time in the pharmacy. I have worked in a community pharmacy for one and a half years at this point. Uh, each shift that I work, I typically counsel 10 to 15 patients. So I've really developed my patient counseling skills and I really look forward to helping as many patients as I can. My goal is to open my own community pharmacy and I've actually been taking some business classes on the side to aid me in opening my pharmacy. Outside of pharmacy, I really like graphic design and I like to design company logos and I plan to de design my own company's logo whenever I open a community pharmacy. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to meet you, and I look forward to collaborating with you in opening the community pharmacy. Okay, so that was an example of an elevator pitch, uh, um, and I hope that was helpful to see one in its entirety. Now let's look at what to do and what not to do during an elevator pitch. So here's some tips and trips, tricks to make your elevator speech a little bit more effective. So imagine this was a part of the introduction to, your, to an elevator speech someone was giving to you. What do you think's wrong with this? Hi, my name is Dan Greer. I'm a third year pharmacy student at Rutgers University. I'm very academically inclined. I'm valedictorian at my high school. Currently have a perfect GPA. It was pretty easy. So what do you think would be wrong with that sort of presentation? Feel free to pause, think about it. But what you want to do is not come across as arrogant or bragging. So you are highlighting your skills and your experiences. So a lot of, the, a lot of what you want to do is use open, positive body language, smile, things like that. 
because you are balancing between highlighting your skills, but again, you don't want to come across as braggy or arrogant. So choose your words carefully, use open body language, and you shouldn't come across that way. Okay, what's wrong with this introduction here? What's up? I'm Dan. I'm a pharmacy student, and I really like working out. So feel free to pause, think about it. So when uh, deciding between being professional and th showing a little personality and a little flair, you should lean on the side of being professional. So that's a little bit too informal. That might be okay as an elevator pitch if you're meeting a classmate or something like that for, uh, for a group work or something along those lines. But if for a job interview, that would be way too um, unprofessional. Okay, now imagine you heard the introduction already, and now we're going to review some content things. So imagine you heard the introduction, and then they went into, I've worked in the lab for the past four years, I am proficient in the VA hospital's computer system, and my goal is to open my own community pharmacy. So what would you think about that? So you want to have some sort of story, some sort of flow, some sort of narrative. So working in a lab, being proficient at the VA computer hospital system, and then wanting to open your own community pharmacy feels a little disjointed. So make it into more of a narrative, a story. So for example, you could say, I've worked in a lab for four years, and during that time I've done a lot of the ordering for the lab, so I've developed some business skills. And working at the VA hospital, I had to learn a few different computer systems. Using my business skills from the lab and using my technology skills from the VA, I plan on opening my own community pharmacy. So make it into more of a narrative and a story. Okay, now imagine in the content section of an elevator speech, you heard this. I have worked at a pharmaceutical company for two years and a hospital pharmacy for two years. Working at a pharmaceutical company has given me the skills to understand how a medication is launched. Working at a hospital has shown me how a hospital pharmacy functions. My goals are either to obtain a fellowship and work for a pharmaceutical company or obtain a re residency and become a clinical pharmacist. So this potentially could be an okay elevator pitch in the content section. So say you were on a rotation with a professor, um, it's okay to not know what you want to do. This would not be the best content section if you were at an interview though. You should have your goals more aligned with what the current position is. So um, it's okay sometimes to be indecisive in the goals section, but when it comes to interviews, don't be indecisive. Okay, now in the content section if you heard this here. I originally worked in a community pharmacy, but I really hated it. Now I work in a hospital pharmacy, and this is a great fit for me. So what do you think would be wrong with that? So it was too negative. You don't want to say that you hated working in a community pharmacy. What if the person interviewing you uh, really likes the community pharmacy and maybe works in one on the side or per diem or has a spouse that works in a community pharmacy or so on? So just leave out the negative part. Don't say you hated working in a community pharmacy. Just say, I used to work in a community pharmacy, now I work in a hospital pharmacy, and that's a great fit for me, and I really like hospital pharmacy. So don't be negative. Uh, spin everything positive. Everything can be an experience, or everything can be looked at positively, especially in the context of an elevator pitch. So to summarize the do's, so practice. So you can always tell if someone's just going through a memorization skill whenever they're prevent presenting their elevator pitch or if they're reading, if it's, a, um, uh, if it's like a FaceTime or a Zoom meeting, you can tell. So practice, adapt your presentation based on the audience, lean on the side of being more professional, utilize body language to your advantage, and make every word count. Some don'ts, don't come across as braggy or arrogant, don't be monotonous, be negative, and don't read or memorize a script. So then the final section or component of this presentation would be to create and practice your own elevator pitch. So I hope that this information was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.